Hey Apollonians, it's May 26, 2020, and you can tell I am still in quarantine because I'm still wearing this hat to cover my horrible non-haircut. So I'm here shooting at Batch Mead in Temecula, California, and today we just got done making this guy, which is an orange chocolate mead. Oh, that's good. YouTube is so oversaturated with card magic that it's gotten to the point where most people advertise with and it's not a card trick. Uh, so I wanted to give a little bit something different, something that is still sleight of hand, something you can do with an every object, but is just a little bit better. Today, I am gonna teach you how to spoon. Wait. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to do magic with a spoon. All right, grab a spoon and let's get started. So step one to the trick is uh, you can actually take the spoon like this and you can bend it like that. To, the repairing part is the hard part. All you do is you stretch it out like this and it completely repairs itself. Now, second part of the trick, we're gonna use a focusing technique like this. Actually, we're gonna use our mind to make the... Huh. So once we've bent the spoon, we have to repair the spoon. So the repair looks like this. Take two hands. Okay, that kind of hurts your hands a little bit. Two hands. There we go. Alrighty, let's get into the explanation of how to do that. Uh, so you're gonna need a spoon. Uh, it's gonna end up bent, so don't choose a spoon that's you know gonna be a problem. You know, like mom's nice china or something. Um, you're gonna need something else. Uh, you don't need this, but it makes the trick look a little bit better. Uh, a nickel. And then, table. It has to be done at a table. We, we're gonna do a magical technique called lapping. It means you drop it in your lap. So you want a small, cheap spoon. Uh, if your spoon is too big or too fancy, you're gonna be like, my spoon is too big. So uh, the nickel is gonna be what makes the first effect work if you're doing it in your, in your hands like I showed you. Uh, you can also do it on the table by going like this ugh, and then making it repair instantly without the nickel and you don't need the nickel. So here's how you do that part. Uh, you're going to take the spoon, you lay it into your fingers like this and your pinky goes behind. You can see it doesn't go real deep into my hand, it just goes at the edge of my finger. So as, cl as close to your hand as you can get it so your pinky is just right behind it and it's just kind of on your fingers and your fingers curl around it. What that's gonna do is, if you let go with your thumb, you'll see it, it'll uh, kind of shoot straight like that. To use the nickel, you put the nickel in front of the spoon, the tail of the spoon, and you're gonna hold that between your first finger and your thumb. Now, the easiest way to do this is to use a table and to kind of press down on the spoon and all that's happening is the spoon is going straight and the nickel makes it look like you're still holding the tail of the spoon. Uh, to make it restore, all you gotta do is take your thumb, pull the nickel in, grab the bowl with your other hand and then just pull it out straight and then you're gonna kind of straighten your fingers to hide that. If the nickel hits uh, the spoon like that, that's actually kind of a cool effect because it kind of feels like something else is happening. I think some magicians would say you're kind of giving something away when you do that, but I think it just adds to the effect. It adds to like, they hear this metal sound and they're like, what the heck is he, is he stretching the metal? What's he doing? So to do it in your hands, it's literally the same setup. So you're gonna place the nickel in front of the tail. You're going to put your pinky behind the spoon and just kind of hold it like in this form formation so they can just barely see the edge of that nickel and they think it's the end of the spoon. Uh, you take your other hand and all you're going to do is just put in place of your hand, uh, you're putting your hand in place of the table so as you push it looks like the spoon is bending and it this I think looks a little bit better than the table to be honest um, but you are a little bit more exposed because you're going to be looking at uh, a tail, a spoon just moving through your hands, uh, but they won't see that. So all you do is kind of force it, and then once you get here, the repair is exactly the same. All you're gonna do is pull the nickel in with your thumb, and then just stretch out the spoon. 
The second part is I like this illusion better because this is to me like what true magic is about. Uh, about focus points. So you're basically going to use an old adage in magic which says if, a, if there's a movement up, they are more likely to follow the movement up than the movement down. It's not always true, but for the most part it is. So what you do is you start with the spoon by your head, and I like to say I'm gonna use my mind to bend the spoon. It's a very mental focus, right? Or something that just uh, allows me to bring my hand up here and my other hand drops. As this hand drops, I'm going to do the move. So the move is super simple. You are going to bend the spoon. And this is why a cheap spoon is important. It's just easier to bend. Uh, if you have super man hands, you could bend like a real sturdy, expensive spoon. But in this case, uh, we're just using a cheap spoon. So the cheap spoon, you're just going to grab it with in all your fingers here, and you're going to put your thumb in the bowl. And Literally all you're going to do is push. Now if you have trouble uh, pushing, it's probably because you're choking up on the spoon. You actually want to be as low as you can on the spoon. It will make the bend easier. Uh, you just want as much leverage essentially as you can. Thanks geometry, now I can do a spoon bending trick. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to get the leverage from being at the bottom of the spoon here and then you're going to push. You're just going to push with your thumb just really hard. So. As your hands switch places, essentially, so you're going from here, light touch, by the way, you wanna have just two fingers on it, grip it as this comes up, and as this goes down, you're gonna push and just bend that spoon. You're gonna bend the crap out of it. When you bring it back up, you see how it's dead on to you? It's dead on to the spectator. Uh, they're not gonna instantly see that the spoon is bent. Now, you, you're focusing on it so you see it right now, but really when they're when this illusion happens what you're going to want to do is stop here and then go huh and as you go huh you turn it to the side it'll bring the fact that the spoon is bent into their focus it almost looks like it instantly bent to them and it bent right now rather than when it was down here so you bring it back up and then and you go huh and it bends you get that action to get them to focus right back here. But now you have a bent spoon, so now you wanna unbend it. Now this part, uh, the other two parts, you do not have to be at a table. You could theoretically get away with them in the hands with, the, with what I've shown you. Uh, this part, you do have to be at a table because you're gonna do a lapping move. Uh, now I have here a, a, a pad that kind of keeps uh, any noise from happening, but you're gonna do this into your lap uh, onto some jeans or whatever you're, you're wearing at the time. Uh, to make this work. So to make this work, uh, this is actually an old Slidini move where he would swallow a knife and what he would do is he would take the, the knife and he would bring it up to his mouth and people, somebody uh, at the table would always kind of freak out a little bit because it's a really sharp knife and you're about to swallow it and he'd go Ksh! and as he would, <laughs> I made a big clang, but as he would go Ksh! to that one person, he would simply just drop the spoon right here when his hands are at the table. And then bring it back up and make it disappear. Uh, we're basically gonna do that same concept with the spoon, but just a little bit differently. So the way that we're gonna do it is we're gonna pretend with the guise of bending the spoon back. So first time you take it, at this point you've probably figured this out though, but at first time you take it, you want to do it twice. You have to do it twice or it will not work, okay? Uh, the first time you take it, you wanna, you wanna mess around with it say something and then let it drop and cling onto the table. It also will reinforce without saying anything in their mind that it's loud when you drop it. So when you do the silent drop in a minute, uh, it will register that you couldn't have gotten away with, you couldn't have gotten away with it with that. So the first time you just drop it onto the table and be like, ah, that kind of hurts. Let me try once more. And then on the once more is when you ditch the spoon. So on the once more, you ditch the spoon. It's gone, nothing's there. And then you do some acting. You wanna act and you wanna play this moment out. You want a little bit of time in between you ditching the spoon and you actually making it vanish. So you're gonna mock unbending it. And once you get it unbent is when I like to make it disappear. 
Alrighty guys, hopefully that was pretty easy to understand. If you are really interested in uh, how to learn more about how to make metal bend in your hands, uh, there's a couple links to DVDs and products below that you can check out. If you guys like this video, my name is Brian Kennedy. Uh, give me a little thumbs up, give a little like to the video, and uh, you know, share it with your friends, see what they think. Actually don't, because then you'll never be able to do this trick to them. Huh, that's a conundrum.